No, you recently announced your pricing, four ninety nine with ads for this subscription service, seven ninety nine without ads. That's a hair less than than Hulu mm -hmm. and their ad supported service. Uh, how do you see your pricing for the subscription service competing, especially when you're introducing a concept that no one, that's never even existed yeah. before? Well, first is we think that about 75% of our customers will pick the $4.99 ad supported because, as Jeffrey said, it's a pretty low ad load, mm -hmm. and our customers are millennials, and you know dollars matter to them. Um, but we give the opportunity if you you know want the want the $7.99 version. And I think your question is, how do we know that people will sign up and pay? Well, of course, we won't know till mm -hmm. we launch. But we have incredible content with a unique viewing experience that's mobile only, targeted to a use case that um, doesn't have this very high quality Hollywood style content. So, you know, you never know till you launch, but we're encouraged by the feedback, the informal feedback we've gotten, the feedback we've gotten as we do. We do user testing every single week now with the app, mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's some enthusiasm that's building. Since you first set the stage for this product almost two years ago, uh, the, the landscape has changed dramatically. We have Apple TV Plus launching a subscription service. You have Disney TV, uh, Disney Plus getting ready to launch. Of course, you already have ESPN Plus, and we're still anticipating that there'll be launches from NBC Universal with ads. Um, Warner Media is going to launch something yep. both with ads and without ads. The landscape changes all the time. Is it making it harder, or will it make it harder, for you to continue to secure the highest yeah. quality content? So here's what I'd say. All the um, folks that you just mentioned are all doing long-form, living room-oriented content. We are doing quick bite content, short form. Everything um, on the app will be under 10 minutes. There will be long form stories told in chapters, but these are quick bite contents for a completely different use case. We don't believe this is you get home at 7 o'clock and you know, start watching Quibi. We think this is 7 in the morning till 7 at night on the go. You're commuting. You're waiting in the line at Starbucks for a cup of coffee. You're at a doctor's office. You're waiting for a meeting to start. Mm -hmm. And we know people are watching 60 minutes of video a day. And we're just going to expand that pie with a real alternative. And, and Jeffrey, from your perspective, as all the companies that invested in you launch their own services, which, depending on how you think about it, from a subscriber standpoint, are competing for subscription dollars. How do you stay ahead of that? Well, they, I, I, again, I have to say, has really kind of been the wonderful thing about this, Julia, which is these partners have been supportive of us from day one. They continue. They see this as incremental. They don't see this as a zero-sum game that we're competing. We don't sit here today, and I don't think anybody would suggest that um, the television uh, ecosystem is competing with the music ecosystem. Mm -hmm. yeah. they're, you know, what Apple and, and Spotify do in music, you don't say, well, that's instead of Netflix or Amazon or Hulu. And it's just a completely different use case. And our belief has been from day one that there's about to be a third category. Mm -hmm. And that category is premium Hollywood quality content, Hollywood quality storytelling on the go on a mobile device. And so what happens, the battle in the living room for the television set um, and the disruption that is going on around that, again, it's amazing to step back and watch it, thrilled we're not involved in it. <laughs> we're in a white space that is our own to lose. And do you think that there will be other players that jump into this space, especially as all your investors launch their own versions of something that's more probably akin to a Netflix or yeah. a Hulu? But do you see them becoming a... So listen, if we are successful here, and we believe we will be, there will most certainly be competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. There's, there, you know, three major networks at first. There was, you know, Netflix and all these different competitors now. So we will certainly have competition. But we hope to be first. We hope to define the category. And we hope to have a first mover advantage. Yeah, and just a final question. So much consolidation in this space. There's a lot of speculation that more consolidation among your investors, because all the media companies <laughs> and your investors are coming. How does that change things? Well, so far it it hasn't. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I don't think there's anything that we see on the horizon right now that um, does anything other than, frankly, put more wind in our sail. Whether it's 5G that's coming mm -hmm. on on to this, the enthusiasm, and you've seen in the last four, six, eight weeks, Julia, a avalanche of talent and mm -hmm. now projects and ideas and I feel like for six or eight months we were you know kind of pushing that boulder up the hill and it feels like we've gone to the other side of it now and this thing has taken off and the quality of talent and storytellers and filmmakers that everybody now wants to come by. We were submitted 185 projects last week. Uh, and Meg, just give us a little sense of how the, the telco's big investment in 5G is going to impact you. 
Well, remember, watching video today on your mobile is good. I think 5G helps it be great. Mm -hmm. And so I think naturally what 5G does is make video on your mobile even more attractive than it is today. And of course, our offering will be great for the telcos. Mm -hmm. So they're enthusiastic about our offering because they think it highlights their new technology innovation. Certainly a lot of change coming in the next nine months before your launch, April 6th. Meg Whitman, CEO of Quibi, Jeffrey Katzenberg, Chairman of Quibi, thank you both so much for taking the time to join us here. Thank, thank you, you. Really for us having it. us in the middle of your own personal yeah. hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little windy here. Um, guys, back over to you.